Good morning, everyone. You made my life so beautiful And I you how you may have made me here and I There's nothing greater than this That's, That's why I love you forever Please, can you just help me 
can appreciate him. You know, we've been friends. I'm always looking lost time now, 94, 95. That is how many years now? And mathematics is not good. Yes. Um, in between that, I've met people, diverse kinds. But there are some people you know, when you meet them and you look down the timeline, this is no more than just uh, friends. This is uh, uh, more that God just made. I, always, I don't call him friend. I call him bosom brother from the same womb. And I want to thank God for his life. Thank God for what God is doing with him through his life. And I have so much to learn. And I'm learning. You know, there are some people that are with them and you have nothing to learn. But you also appreciate what God is doing in his life, the movement of God, the actions of God, the interpretations of God in his life. And, um, and uh, some of the few things I'm going to share this morning, actually, I got it from him. So let me just tell him now. Yes. <laughs> so, um, please just open your Bible with me to the book of, and we're going to read a couple of scriptures. Uh, let's go back to our team scripture. But I will read two, for the sake of time, I'm going to read two verses there. Then we'll go to 1 Corinthians. Then we'll come back to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. So we're going to jump from those two main websites. And I'll read Ephesians 3. Um, I'll read from verse 8 to 10. And unto me, who is less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship. If you read the King James Version, another translation will tell you the administration of this mystery. Now, from the beginning of the world, which has been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in the heavenly places, might be known but by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Please just circle that, if you will, in your scripture, the wisdom of God. Now, let's go quickly to 1 Corinthians. Can we have 1 Corinthians? We are going to read that a little bit longer. I'll read from verse 18. 1 Corinthians. Um, can I have that quickly to help me out? 1 Corinthians 1. No, no, we're going from, we start from verse 18. Good. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish, foolishness, but unto us which are saved is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and I will bring nothing to nothing the understanding of the prudent. For where is the wise, or where is the scribe, and where is the disputer of this world? And that God not made the foolish the wisdom of this world? For, for, that, for after that is the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God, but it pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require the sign and the Greeks seek after wisdom. For we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block to the Greeks foolishness. But unto them which are saved, which are called, both Jews and the Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God stronger than men. For ye see your calling, brethren, that you, that out that many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, but not many noble, are called. But, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of this world to confound the things which are mighty. Praise God. And the base things of this world and the things which are despised are God choosing, yea, and the things which are not, to bring to naught things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him that but of him are ye in Christ, who is who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification, redemption, part of the riches, that according as it is written, that he that glory it. Let him glory in the Lord. Now, can we go quickly, lastly, to the first, um, to four Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. All right? Wherefore also, after I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, 
and revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, uh, yesterday, I, I started a, more or less like a journey with us. And I, because I, like I told you, I came from a mining city of Jaws. And um, I, I'm having a mining mindset to our team. That, and I want to establish to you that it is not enough to tell us or to make us to understand that you have a land or to show you more or less that um, you have some precious truths or minerals in a particular place and you do not have the tools to excavate or to have access to it. Are, are you following me? So such also is, these are the riches of Christ, that one of the mining tools that we, you will need to be able to excavate or to come to have access to those riches of Christ is the spirit of revelation. All right? Now the spirit of revelation is more or less like the spirit of access. Is the one that shows you this is the door. And he's the one that gives you the key to come inside. That it doesn't do beyond that. So beyond after that, I've been more or less that like you come in, or more or less like I give you my ATM card. You have access to my card, my ATM card, but I didn't give you the PIN number. So you can slot in the card, but you can't have access to it. Are you following me? So think about the spirit of wisdom as the ATM card. So the moment you, but you know also, that I can give you my ATM card, tell you my PIN number. I'm almost tempted to say that to Jesus. Stop that, Lord. You know, <laughs> you know, and when you now, you now get the number, but you do not even, can, you can't identify which one is two, three, or seven, or zero. You understand me? So it goes beyond that. Now even when you do that, so and you'll be able to Plug in or you log in with the code and you'll be able to. You've, how, how many of you have had this experience when you get to the ATM and you're in a hurry and people put in their PIN number, I mean the card, put in the code and the screen comes with the display, they don't know what next to do again. How many of you have experienced that? Whether this uh, withdrawal, you didn't get to know. So that is what the spirit of revelation does to you. It shows you where it is you locate. But the spirit of wisdom comes in is the spirit of process. That is why I call it the spirit of materiality. So what revelation gives to you, now you have access to it, you know it. Because this topic, I mean this theme is highly doctrinal and revelatory. But it doesn't, God only does want us to know the mysteries of his glory, the riches of all of those things. But how does it work and find expression in your daily life? And just like what Prof told us yesterday, that when you have revelation without consecration, and when you have consecration without revelation, which will give you frustration. So what bridges the two? When you have revelation and consecration, so that you will not lead to waste, or you will not lead to frustration, is the operation of the spirit of wisdom. So this topic, or this introduction, or what I want to call the spirit of wisdom, or what Paul was praying for the church, it's what, it's more or less like you are, uh, as ministers of God, we are working ourselves out of work so that you become independent. Are, are you following me? So that you don't be as such that every day you have to come to church, they have to begin to teach you the spirit of, I mean, the, the blessedness or the goodness of, of redemption. You know it yourself, you can get it on your own. Are, are you following me? So we want to look at what I call today the wisdom of God in Christ. Now I will start by saying that the riches of God in Christ are manifested in wisdom and in power. The riches of God in Christ or the unsearchable riches of God in Christ are manifested in both in wisdom and in power. Alright? And um, let me put it this way to us. That the practicality of our faith is in wisdom. The demonstration of it is in power. I will repeat that. The practicality of our faith is in wisdom. The demonstration of our faith is in power. Alright? And that's why the scripture describes Jesus as the wisdom and what? The power of God. Please say with me, Jesus... Please talk to me, please. Jesus, Jesus is the power of God. I mean, is the wisdom of God demonstrating the power of God. I'll say that again. Please say with me, Jesus, Jesus is the wisdom of God demonstrating the power of God. 
So when you understand this, you are standing fully grounded in the things of God in the realm of the spirit. Both the wisdom and the power. So, what Revelation does to us is that it communicates, like I said earlier last week, um, yesterday, that it communicates the depths of the riches of God to us. And also, not only communicating the depths, it brings up the complexities of these riches to us so that we come to a deeper understanding or to grasp it very well. But beyond that, the operation of the spirit of wisdom is that it, what the spirit of wisdom is, the dimension of the operation of the spirit of, of the Holy Spirit is to now begin to interpret or to break down the, what I call a stepping down into a knowledge absorbable forms. Those things that you have come to understand. It's very, very important. So the, the absence of these two will make it very difficult for an average believer to accurately capture the riches of God and to also implement it. So the spirit of revelation gives you the ability to capture. Spirit of wisdom gives you the grace to implement. For example, let's look at the riches of his goodness, for example. It brings us to a point as a believer that God is good. You understand that. But how do you, I'm going to jump a little bit to my second session. How do you steward that to your life and to the next person and to your world of influence? That is where wisdom comes, the spirit of wisdom comes in. Let me give us another example so that we begin to understand it before I move further. Look at the life of Joseph. Joseph was able, or let me put it, the experience of Joseph with Pharaoh. Pharaoh had the operation of the spirit of revelation. Famine is going to come. Now, Joseph was brought in. They already, he had two things operating within him. He was able to interpret to them that ah, these cows you see, these two sets of cows you see, which are seven, he was able to interpret to them. Revelation was broken down into a level you can understand. Now, leaving it at that is like interpretation of the dream. You have brought you to an understanding of it. Without the operation of the spirit of wisdom, the family will still come and you will still suffer. So wisdom now comes in and tells you now that okay, when you have the first seven years of abundance, begin to save, adjust, invest, do this. So that when the family now comes in, it doesn't affect you. And that is the difference we see as believers. It's not that we do not have a measure of understanding of the riches of Christ. What is missing is the administration, the implementation of those things in our very life. And so, when a believer now comes in like that, even though despite the presence of access to the riches of God in Christ by revelation, the believer still walks in his life bankrupt, bereft, and wretched because the wisdom dimension is not at work in the life of the believer. This is due to a point that it makes what you are looking at in the realm of the spirit, what you are having access to, now it now tells you this is how you will bring it to pass on earth. And that's why Paul said to the intent, that the intent of the purposes of God, all those things God said, is that the church, through his manifold wisdom, will display his goodness. So he's the spirit of materiality. I am a teacher and also a father. I relate with um, younger generation very well, being the patron of NCCM. Let me give a little example. A brother can pray. Let me start with the brothers. I don't like to go to the sisters. They are very tender. I like to be in their good, good books. Yes. You know, a brother can pray, seek the face of the Lord, and accurately capture by the leading of the Lord the right damsel. I'm an old school, so let me use the old school language. The right sister, that this is the person. Are you, are you following me? Spirit of revelation. I'm bringing it to practicality. The guy is correct. But once now, how do you now shoot your shoot? 
You understand? Now I got your attention. The brother is correct that sister XYZ is the person. But now, he needs the spirit of wisdom. He don't just go and just see the sister and say, eh, Sister XYZ, you are my wife. You've knocked off everything. Do you understand me? Good. So, wisdom will tell you, the spirit of wisdom will tell you that, you see, this sister, this is the way you have to go about it. Maybe you invite her for a date. Okay, let me, let me just stop. Let me change the different industry. You understand? You will now begin to give you the stepwise strategy. You understand? So how you will find your way and use the right words. Are you following me? So you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't go to our WhatsApp and say hi or hello. You understand? That is a better way you go through it. Am I making sense to you? Good. So now I'm just giving that to us so that we will come to understand that you can know all the depths, grabs the understanding of the goodness and the riches of God, but your life, your Christian life and your life may not reflect that. That when people sit down with you on a doctrinal level, you are sound. But how do you now interpret that into your daily life? And that is where the believers have that challenge. Job 32. Can I have Job 32 verse 9 quickly? Wow. I'm ahead of myself. Good. That will take time to pray. Job 32. Or should I just quote that verse 9? Job 32 verse 9. I want to just... Draw to, I said verse 32 verse 9. Uh, okay. Great men are almost always wise. Neither do aged men have understanding. Go ahead. Uh, is it 32 or 33 where the scripture says that there is a bright that is a spirit in man and um, the bride of the Lord God gives him what? Understanding. Now, what, I, what that's what I actually wanted to quote. I, I will get the actual scripture. Now, between revelation and wisdom what links the two when the two mingles together they gives back to what is called understanding. Understanding goes beyond a state. Understanding is a spirit. And that is why Paul said that the eyes of your understanding may be what? Enlightened. So, it's a product of revelation and wisdom. And please, this thing I'm talking about as wisdom, I'm not talking of right, accurate, on the, what do people call it, the, the definition? Uh, knowing the fact and applying it together. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the insight of, into the workings of God. God has a way of getting his things done. Say with me, revelation, illumination, inspiration. Those three must be fundamentally at work in the life of the believer. I, I, like, I like the Yoruba expression of it. Ifio. Ishikbaya, Imisi. You understand me? Inspiration has to do with, I mean, has to do with the outflow, what you say, the utterance. The illumination has to do with your faculty, where light just comes in and everything opens up. And that is one of the things that, I, when, when we sing this on channels of my spirit, opened up. It's talking about everything being your mind, your faculty. That was one of the things that happened to the disciples in Acts chapter 2. Their mental faculties, the everything within them, burst open to that dimension. And that is what Revelation does to you. There is an illumination, there is an inspiration that comes along with it. Colossians chapter 2, quickly. Colossians 2. Then we'll go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. We're going to pray strongly today. I want us to take our time to pray. Because this is very, very important. We've looked at um, verse 2, we look at 2 and 3. Because we can know and expound and be very vast, astute in all these riches of God in Christ. But my challenge is 
the reflection of it in our lives. It is the spirit of wisdom that brings you to that understanding. When wisdom is at work with you in your life, and you are working with the understanding of the goodness of the Lord, you will not bless what God has cursed, and you will not curse what God has blessed. You will, it will, give, you will not move to one extreme to the other. Are, are you following me? So you will not... Pastors, we need this more. I, I'm talking out of my personal experience. The Bible talks about the goodness and the severity of God. What God why God is able to be balanced is because of the spirit of wisdom is at work in him. There are times God will take your bum bum and wipe you into line. And there will be times where, you know, we've asked a question that God, what is the difference between Saul and, Moses and David? If, I, if you want to look at it from the human perspective, David, I mean, Saul was much better. He didn't commit, mother didn't commit adultery. The guy was morally clean. David was, God bless his life. You understand? But when you begin to judge it from that perspective, you will not, because wisdom is not, wisdom is more or less like the spirit of insight into the workings of the details of God. You understand why he is quiet. You understand why he's moving in a particular way. Now, Colossians chapter 2. Now, let's go from verse 2 to 3. That their hearts may be comforted, being knitted together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding. So that is Riches that comes from understanding that you know that you know. Okay? To the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, verse 3, in whom, that is in Christ, are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The reason is why these treasures are hidden in Christ is because God is a spirit and God is a communicating spirit. God speaks. So, and because God speaks and is a spirit, he doesn't speak necessarily at our level. So that is why when we are interacting with God, God doesn't make sense. And that is one of the things we must understand. God does not make sense. For example, let the weak say in our world, let the weak say I'm what? Weak. Because they will come to tell you that that is a lie. But when you come to the realms of God, we don't talk like that. The weak says what? I'm strong. So you have to understand the operations of the weak, of the wisdom of God. Alright? So, it is very important, that is why he said the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, because the communications of the riches of God is not, like I said earlier on, it's not good enough. You don't need, need to know it, but we must come to a point whereby, how does it work in our life? Can I have Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 quickly? Colossians 1 9, where it talks about the fruit. Good. Now for this cause also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, to desire that you might be filled and to desire, we pray and we long. That is an apostolic trust and passion. And that is what I'm bringing to you. That beyond, I, I, I could go on and say, okay, let me talk about the riches of his blood. Beyond that, I'm giving you the assignment. The spirit of revelation, you go back from now on and begin to go on the side. To log you on to a quest. But beyond that, my desire is that you be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all what? Wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now let me give us a good example of this. I will give from the scripture and in practicality of our lives. Acts 13, the knowledge of his will for example, which is one of the riches of, um, of or, or, or one of the unsearchable riches in Christ. Because the will of God is a mystery. Are you following me? The will of God is what? A mystery. It has to be revealed. The will of God for the believer, for your life, is a mystery. And that's why the Bible calls it that the knowledge of his will, you come into the knowledge of it. It's the spirit of revelation that tells you. And that is why the believer does, shouldn't gamble. Now, let me give us an example. From the book of Acts, 
Acts 13, we all remember the story. Certain disciples gathered together. They were ministering to the Lord. But there was a will hanging over their head. The knowledge of his will. The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost said, separate unto me, what? Paul, and that was a revelatory expression of the will of God. There was no way. It wasn't, they didn't sit down together and say, okay, um, you know, we got the map now, so what next do we do? Okay, we pick Brother Paul, we pick Brother Barnabas, okay, two of you will get you. They didn't come into it. There are dimensions in your life. In fact, there are truths and things God has said over your life that you can't come in into, except by the operation of the spirit of revelation. And one of it is the knowledge of his will. The knowledge of his will. And you can't walk outside that if you are going to fulfill destiny. And it, now let, uh, you, that, let's go back, let, just stay with me in the book of Acts. Chapter, I mean the book of uh, uh, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. So in that knowledge of that is will, you must now be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. It is not enough to know, for example, um, because I deal with young people so much, I always, you know, sometimes to get the best way you can get attention of young people, Pastor, is um, just look at the high points or the pressure points. You know, that is what we call um, in biology, you know, under our skin, you know, that is what we call sensory receptors that is linked to our spinal cord. You know, for example, if I, if I pinch you now, you feel the pain because I have touched the pain receptor that goes straight to your spinal cord, straight to the brain and tells you that is pain, you are being pinched. When you don't feel it anymore, something is wrong somewhere. You understand? So the sensory receptors or the pain pressures in most average young people today and everybody, see that you talk with economics, their marriage or what is it, like to get their attention, to be able to drive home a spiritual truth. You understand? I'm just giving us the techno out. Now, it like in your relationship, like in the knowledge of the of your will of God for your life. Like I said earlier yesterday, there is nowhere you will find in scripture the name, the shape, the structure, the skin color of the person you married. It's not there in the Bible. You understand me? But it's a will of God and it's a knowledge in God's mind. It is the Holy Spirit that brings you to that knowledge. And you got to know. Likewise, let me leave that like that. Likewise, also, if God is calling you and said, okay, there's nowhere you will find in the scripture where God will tell you, okay, oh, Paul, I'm sending you to the north and you will go to Joss first before you get to Kaduna. It's not there in the scripture. So, how do I come into the knowledge of that will? And that is why I said to us yesterday that the scriptures and the Holy Spirit are the two fundamental things. You can't stay on the scripture in loop. Am I making sense to you? Oh, God. You can be scripturally sound, biblically sound, and function completely all through your life out of the will of God. What you need that will make the scripture to be sensible and you fulfill God's purpose in your life is your relationship with a person called the Holy Ghost. Am I making sense to you? Because there are different kinds of knowledge. Are, are you following me, sir? You have academic knowledge, scientific knowledge, cultural knowledge, even culinary knowledge, how to cook. You understand me? It's a knowledge. But there is also the knowledge of the will of God for your life. So what is your quotient? What is your, I'm trying to look for the right word, how rich are you in the knowledge of his will for your life? That is where the spirit of revelation comes in. Now, from now, the interpretation, the expression of that is where wisdom, that is why Paul said that we pray that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will. And that will be the believer's will, prayer. You see, let me say this in Yoruba, I will interpret it. I pray most of the time. I remember my father and the Lord, before he went to the heaven to his reward, we always pray. Paul, Luru Kodjesu, O Nishisheo, O Nishiri. That is, we say that you will not, you will not miss steps. You will not do what God doesn't want you to do. 
You understand me? And I say amen. But God said beyond the prayer, this is where you need to come in, to be filled with the knowledge of what? Of his will. God has a will. How your life should be ordered. Places you should go. What you should not do. The things you should do. Are, are you following me? For us as pastors, for example, for those of us pastors in the house, and I will give us scripture from the life of Moses. It is not enough for us to get the revelation, okay, God is sending me to a place. Okay, God is sending me to Abel Kuta. You have the revelation to start a church. But beyond that, the spirit of wisdom comes in now. How is the structure of the church should look like? Okay, don't say because everybody is starting service by nine. So you too, you start your church by nine. Yours could be different. Following what we call the pattern. I have a young friend back there in church, in Joss. The name of his church is the Evening Church. Yes. They don't meet on Sunday in the morning. They meet in the evening. And it's a full-blown church. That was a pattern that was given to him. And a lot of people that are coming out of him to follow that same pattern. And they're already struggling. And I saw him. <laughs> and I have to ask them that, did God tell you to go through that guy? Don't follow him. He knew what God said. Are you following me? So that is why to copy is very... Am I making sense to you? Good. So to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. In all wisdom. You need not some. Every part of it. You need all of that. Now, I, I, I will say come back to the story of Moses, but let me just go to it, to it first. Moses had a very strong revelatory gift. Sat with the Lord. God showed him the tabernacle. He saw everything. But God gave him a commandment. that when you get back to the earth, make sure you build it according to what I show you there. But something was missing in David, Moses' life. It's the same thing that has to do with our life. God shows us things in the spirit. Nobody is doubting that. And that is the corundum. That is the paradox. That is the frustration that some of us will do. We will find out in our lives, you know you pray. You know you have this revelation. I know what I saw. But between what you saw, what you were shown, and what you come in and what the two of them, there is a huge chasm. There is a contradiction going on. What is missing is the wisdom. The practicality, how you now work it out in your life. That demonstration doesn't bring you to maturity. What brings a church, a believer to maturity is the expression of the will of God in all wisdom. Because power flows in the direction of his will. Hello? The power of God always goes in the direction of his will. Not the other way around. The will of God doesn't follow the power of God. It is the power of God that follows the, the will of God. If the power of God begins to follow the will of God in your life, you begin to function what is called lawlessness. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus did not invalidate the power expressions in the life of those people. We prophesy in your name. We saw vision. We cast out devils. He didn't say those things were wrong. He didn't even say, uh, uh, I was, it's not my name that looks like my name. But the issue was that you, were, you walked out of my will. So we must come in and you must now begin to reroute the power of God in the direction of the knowledge of the will of God in your life. And that is what, at the end of the day, when you stand before the Lord, your work on earth will survive the fire. Praise the Lord. I want to begin to close. Mm. Father. So, therefore, one more thing I want to say is that When Paul was praying this prayer for the church, and he said to be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. What the spirit of wisdom does for us, or does for the believer quickly, is that it confronts on you a certain, what I call, a spiritual skill. This is the spirit of creation. The creative spirit of God. Proverbs chapter 8, 
You remember that messianic expression about wisdom? He said, I was beside him as a what? A master craftsman. He said, I was there at the beginning. So everything God will communicate to us, the, the, the riches of his, wisdom, uh, of, of, his, of his grace, the, of his blood, and everything, the practical expression in our very lives, in everything we do, will be as a result of this wisdom. Even in warfare. I remember a time, it should be 2017 or 2018, one of the, I really don't like to use this word, sons and all the rest of them. Let's just flow. One of the persons that looked up to me for guidance back there in Jaws was having some issues in his ministry and in his, wife, in his family. And I said, okay, Reverend, no problem. I am one person... Okay, I'm possibly sorry. It's seated, so don't let me say. But I am one person that has a lot of people around me that are ordained reverend, even though I'm not one. You know? So, I, I, we came in with some of our team to have some time of prayer with him. And while we were praying, and um, this inspiration, what I call a revelation, just came in. And I said, we're going to use the blood of Jesus. Are you following me? Now, the Bible says in him we have what? Redemption. And I, I explained to him, he said, we need to buy back from that understanding. And we were praying. And one of the, when we were praying, I was just praying in the spirit, and I was an interpretation of that tongues. And I said, we confront every challenges in your life with the weight of the blood of Jesus. And every demonic activity around you will present the weight of this blood if you can carry it with. And that was all I said. And there were certain manifestations in the family. And the answer came, let me cut the story short down. Now, two things was at work there with me. And some of the kids around me said, Sir, we saw that we were pleading the blood of Jesus, but we said the blood of Jesus wait. He said, do the blood has weight? I said, yes, it has weight. The blood of Jesus has weight. Hello? It doesn't only have cleansing power. He is the only one that can carry it. Because the Bible says, from the Old Testament, he said the high priest, when he sheds the blood, we do what? We carry the blood and sprinkle it, isn't it? And when that angel, I mean, Mary Magdalene, he said, don't touch me. I've not gone to your father and my God. I, he needs to go in and complete that work and present it before the Father. I, are you following me? So, the, not only that the blood has weight, it has a voice. Are, are you following me? Now, I'm just bringing that in practical expression for us, that even in certain situations, when the spirit of, the oppression of the spirit of wisdom can also find expression in your communication abilities and grace. I always pray for some of my kids anytime they're going for an interview. I always pray to them. I, I pray. I, 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 one of the prayers I always pray to them, I said, I said, in Jesus' name, the Lord will give you the tongue of the learned. Your tongue will not cleave to the roof of your tongue, of your, of your mouth. Jesus said, I will give you a tongue and what? Wisdom that cannot be what? Good. Fine. So it's not just for you to open your mouth. My prayer for us is that may foolishness not proceed out of our tongue. Yeah. Am I making sense to all? That is a fountain of wisdom that finds expression via communication, via the things you do. Are you following me? It's part of the creative abilities that we find in God. Ah. I'm beginning to close. Let me just drop this for us as pastors and believers. You know, from the scripture, and I will give us from the scripture very well, there are, you will always see at every season and every time four moves in the face of the earth. In every church, there is always four moves. In every home, there is always four move expression. In every nation, there is always four moves. Are you following me? There is also, 
The first move is the move of men. You see that in the book of, in, in book of Genesis. Nimrod. That was the move of men. Gather together and let's build. In Nigeria, there is a move of men. In every church, there will be a move of men. In the book of Acts, there was a move of men. I think Acts chapter 6, when they said food is not properly shared. It was, that was not the move of God. That was the move of men. They gathered together. Am I making sense to you? Acts chapter 2, I mean Psalms 2. Why did they eat in one? That is a move of men. They gathered together. Am I making sense to all? There is always a move of, in, in, in every nation, you will always see a move of men. And the move of men is always characterized by the wisdom of men that you will see in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So anywhere you see men congregating together, they gather together. They just sit down together and say, all right, we don't like this person. Oh, they're gathering together. That is the wisdom that is of men that is expressed there. Number two, you will also see in every expression, even from the scripture, you will see the move of Satan. Satan has been moving from the beginning. He began his move. He made the first move in Genesis chapter 3. And he has been moving up to now. The lion, the devil is like what? The roaring lion. You must be able to know that. You will see the move of men. You will see the move of the devil. But also, when you look closer, from the scripture also, you will see the move of hell. Upon this rock, I will do what? I will do what? And the gates of what? So there is a move of hell. It's different from the move of the devil. You see, the move of the devil does not segregate. It does not separate believers and unbelievers. Whether you are born again or you are not born again, the devil hates humanity. You just have to say to that, he hates the sons of men. That is the move of Satan. His agenda is to kill, to steal, and to do what? Destroy. As long as you are in the flesh, you are a max man. He hates you. That is the move of the devil. Are, are, are you following me? Now, but, but the move of hell is specific for the church. It's specific for the believer. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. Now, but the last one, which is my joy, that is the move of the spirit. So we have the move of men, the move of the devil, or the move of Satan, the move of hell, but also you have the move of the spirit. Now, this is where, why I brought that expression for us is that because to know, to be filled with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom, in every church, there will always be one expression of this move. As a pastor, in your place of work, you will always find that. There will not be one person that will say, the manifestation of those riches is where you are filled with in all wisdom in your life. So that we will not be, permit me to use this word, esoteric. Are you following me? We are very strong doctrinally, but we are very poor or bankrupt in the manifestation of the truths that we have known in our head or in our heart. Starting from our personal work and what we do. Uh, uh, do you all get that? So uh, I'm just bringing to conclusion what I started yesterday. That the, God now gives us the spirit of wisdom so that all these truths you are finding concerning Christ must not just be hanging inside you here, but you must find expression in your life. It is the oppression of the spirit of wisdom in all spiritual understanding that comes to it. Do we all get that? Shall we pray? From your throne.
and revelation. This is what I call the digestive enzymes. You, there is no need if you eat food and you cannot digest it, it will not bring nutrition to your body. You will become constipated. It will bring disease to the body. This is a problem that we come to understand the truth of the scripture via revelation, but wisdom is missing. Our heads are big, but our hearts are small. Our walk is poor because there is no wisdom. That we just pray the Lord, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, spirit of wisdom and revelation, that as I come into the knowledge of the Lord, as I come into the knowledge of the Lord, these are the two things that must be mixed with it to bring forth fruit, to bring forth fruit, to bring forth fruit, to bring forth fruit, to bring forth fruit. Shall we just cry unto the Lord this morning that in every area of your life that you will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom. That idea, that vision is real. Don't discard it. What is missing? What is missing is the spirit of materiality, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of creativity that we put the reality into, into the earth, to the glory of the Lord. The intent of it is that the church might show the manifold wisdom of God. God is not contented with us having knowledge, revelation, without a showing, without a display, without a display. Yes. Baptize us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Fill us, Lord. Not just with the knowledge of your will, but in all wisdom, in all wisdom and understanding, in all wisdom and all understanding that we will accurately present you, we will accurately express, we will accurately manifest in precision, in a precise way, in a precise way, in exactitude, Lord, in exactness, as we have shown us, we will see on earth. That is the prayer that we say, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What makes the will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven in the spirit of wisdom? My life, my life, our life we go in the direct exactitude, in the direct expression of your will for our life spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom spirit of wisdom we are not contented in knowing we are not contented in coming to a place of revelation we are not contented with a place of knowledge but lord we want to accurately express it in the face of the earth in the name of the lord jesus we are not contented lord we want to be the exact representation of your son. He is the exact 